Ladies and gentlemen, it's a big, weird, wild world out there, folks, and here we stand, our pie del cañón, ready for anything. I'm Rob, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to this very special edition of The Probo Show, coming to you on a beautiful Monday afternoon. If you're listening to uh, the pre-recorded, or the, the recorded, sorry, version of this, if you're a podcast listener... You know I love you. But you can also be here live. Normally we um, we produce a show at 8.30 a.m. Central European time, but this special edition coming to you at 6 p.m. Central European time. How are we doing? We've got some good people in the chat. We've got Nessa, Vanessa, Vero, Nuriatam, The Bridge, Ronnie. Oh, my God. Close the doors, guys. Close the doors. No one else gets in there. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Well, um, I thoroughly tortured the elves this afternoon, and they gave me an amazing set of content for today's show. In today's 100 Humans, I asked people the worst place to take a first date. Where's the worst place to take a first date? Nombra el peor lugar para una primera cita. Ho! Será posible, vaya nivelazo. Thanks, Natch. <laughs> Natch isn't here. It's all me. <laughs> so if you hear a nivelazo, you know it's because I'm an ass. All right. In today's Complete the News, we'll find out how or why two corrections officers, um, funcionarios de prisones, I think you say, um, uh, how they uh, allowed or facilitated a prisoner or an inmate to escape. And if we've got time, we'll find out about Cristiano Ronaldo in some trouble. And today's unpopular opinion, pretty much the reason we do these After Dark episodes, everyone should use only they, them pronouns. I got a nivelato from um, from Vero, so, from Nessa, so I, I will take that. How are you doing, Zul? Um, how are you doing? I got in just as the door closed. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> prisiones, Pris- prisiones, thank you, thank you, Vera, prisiones from the bridge, all right, all right, you guys get this one. Será posible, <laughs> vaya nivelazo. You know, I don't mind if I make a little mistake, if you're learning, if you're one of the international listeners learning English as a second language, you know, take heart that even me, on the radio, I make mistakes every day, I don't care. All right, so yeah, um, everyone should o- should only use they them pronouns. Todo el mundo debería utilizar únicamente el pronombre ello. I think is the way you would say it. They them pronouns. We'll get into that in a second. Oof, an unpopular one as well today. Let me tell you. But right now, guys, I'm here. You're here. Let's look at what's going on in the world. Oh my god. Oh my god. How often have you heard me on my other show, on the lunchtime show? Giggle at Andrea's um, claims of suffering from ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I'm not sure how you say it in Spanish. I'll be honest. If you know, tell me in the chat. So here we go. This news coming from uh, come from sciencealert.com. A massive review finds ADHD is more prevalent in adults than we ever realized. Um, un revisión masiva revela que el TDAH, is that right? TDAH, es más frecuente en adultos de lo que cre- creamos. Oh, God, I'm going to go. Será posible. Vaya no, I, don't care, I don't care even what you said there, even just for the attempt. Those words are difficult for an English man. Deficit de, deficit de atención. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nessa. Good afternoon, Decoy. Welcome, welcome. We only want to help you improve, and I appreciate it, Vero. I appreciate it. So, yeah, a comprehensive review of 57 studies involving 21 million participants worldwide indicates that ADHD, again, that's Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is more prevalent in adults than previously thought, affecting an estimated 180 million individuals globally. That's a lot of people, friends. Um, the underdiagnosis of ADHD in adults poses significant um, public health challenges as the condition, often associated with children, persists into adulthood and can lead to various social, physical and mental health issues if left untreated. 
The article then continues to say, adults with ADHD, particularly those with in inattentive type, frequently face symptoms like chronic insomnia and a heightened risk of suicide. Oh, dear. And we thought they were simply bowling to Gomercindo, says the bridge. <laughs> they would be so lucky. Uh, T-D-A-H. Uh, Trastorno de déficit de atención y hiperactividad. Vero. Será posible. Vaya nivelazo. Dropping some knowledge. Dropping some knowledge in the chat. Thank you, thank you. Um, so there you go. Yeah, um, quite a serious, um, quite a serious report there. Even though we're making kind of, we're being quite light-hearted about it. The study underscores the necessity for improved awareness, diagnostic uh, procedures, and treatment strategies to manage ADHD in adults, highlighting the disparity between the condition's prevalence and the health resources allocated for it. It's interesting, right? Because when we were kids, I, th- I assume most of you listened to the show. Judging by my, um, by the, uh, yeah, by the, by at least what my analytics tells me, most of you are between the ages of thirty-five and fifty-five. Okay, for us, when we were children, you know, the uh, the the di- a diagnosis of ADHD was very very uncommon. I didn't even hear about it until I'd hit adult adulthood. And I, my friends, I, I'm 45 years old, believe it or not. <laughs> um, uh, you're welcome, my capitan, says, um, says Vero. Thank you, thank you. According to Twitch, you've been live for 10 hours, really. I'm quite the streamer. <laughs> Just on the cusp, Rob, says, um, says the bridge. So yeah, how is it that this thing, this condition has gone so under um, underdiagnosed for such a long time. Well, I think it's prevalent in adults because back when we were children, the idea was, you know, grow up, put your big boy pants on, rub some dirt in it and get back to work, right? And it seems to be like this condition is a lot more prevalent in our society than we, um, than we would like to admit. Um, there were so many children suffering from this, but it just didn't matter, says Nessa. Yeah, yeah. And now we know more about it. I mean, um, I, I personally know like um, a, a family who one of the kids suffers from ADHD and it is obvious when you interact with a kid. However, I'm, I can only assume when that kid, if that kid were now my age, when they were young, they would have heard things like sit down, be quiet. You know, you need to pay more attention. Sad. It's sad. And hopefully our educational institutions uh, are keeping up with this um, diagnosis and this problem. Next, we're going to go into a a very alarming um, piece of news from Axios.com. Global warming may be accelerating. Um, Guys, I'm going to post the link to this in um, in my in my sorry my Discord in my Patreon as I normally do. I urge you to go and see that. That's Patreon.com forward slash Professional Bohemian. I urge you to go and see it because there is a graph in there. I tried to put in the stream. It's there. If you can see it, I know it's kind of weird to see on the screen. You'll see the um, uh, the increase I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so it seems like global warming may be accelerating. El calentamiento global puede estar acelerándose. Yeah, this is coming from Axios. The rate of global warming has seen a significant acceleration, particularly in the last 15 years, surpassing previous records since the 1970s. September experienced an unprecedented rise in temperatures, marking it as the warmest month, contributing to 2023, likely being the hottest year on record. For those of you here, in at least in, um, in Western Europe, my God, it would be hard to ignore the fact that this has been just a ridiculously hot period of time. Just like, just a week ago, we could have been walking around in shorts and flip-flops here in Madrid. And that is uncharacteristic for the city. Nessa says, there were many children... Ah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't matter, yeah, with regards to ADHD. So, yeah, um, this rapid warming is attributed to factors such as El Nino, or the El Nino event... Um, and human-induced climate change due to fossil fuel consumption. Now, look, I I recognize there are probably a ton of people, depending on your political kind of, 
on which side of the political aisle you stand on. Whether you want to admit it's um, uh, humans have played a part in this global warming or whether you think it's cyclical, whatever you think. What we can't deny anymore that is that it's happening, am I right? I mean, come on. If every time, it seems like every time I open the news, I'm hearing about a new flood or a new extreme weather situation happening somewhere in the world. Yet there are still people in the, the realm of politics that are acting like this isn't, you know, this is no big thing. This happened a hundred years ago. <laughs> Come on, dude. Stop smoking what you're smoking. This is, um, uh, this is, this is something. Whether you believe my, we have caused it or not, I mean, surely we should be th coming together to think about solutions, right? You know what annoys me most about the climate change debate? When we're kind of making efforts to kind of live and be a little bit more um, responsible with our environment. People are saying, oh, it's so unnecessary. What a waste of time. Uh, hello. Don't you enjoy living in a city where the, the air is a bit clear, cleaner to breathe? Don't you enjoy not seeing trash on the streets? Even if, even if you don't think humans have contributed to climate change, there's no denying that when we make an effort globally, the world becomes a lot nicer. Come on. Uh, let's see what Nessa says here. She says, but this, but and this is an unpopular opinion. Today, they do put a label to everything and overprotect children, which I think isn't a good idea either. How come two of my nieces are taking pills and they are under seven years old? Come on. That gets the Probo stamp of approval. You know what? I'm with you on this. I'm with you on this. Um... I think we need a better balance between the over-diagnosis of certain issues or at least maybe the, the, the prescription of medicines to certain issues. There needs to be a better balance between that and what we had when I was a kid, which is, you know, nothing. <laughs> you just go to the dumb kids class like I was, I was put in the dumb kid class and you get forgotten about. There needs to be somewhere in between those two things because I think, yeah, there is. Um, uh, there are a lot of kids taking a lot of medicines. Hmm. Uh, Vero says, we are suffering global warming and we aren't doing anything about it. What is wrong with us? Um, as I always say, there is no planet B. Oh. That gets the Probo stamp of approval. Yeah, what is wrong with us? I don't know. It feel I feel like occasionally we think, you know, we should be prioritizing um, our income, our GDP, over the protection of our planet. Like, like there would be a country if the if we all were made extinct tomorrow <laughs> by a, a, a cataclysmic climate event. Yeah, it seems like our priorities as a civilization are a little screwed up. Um, uh, the bridge here says, "De todo se peca." De todo se peca. I'm not sure what that means. Shall I, I, shall I kick my translation out? Sinning is everything. Oh, look at that. I don't even get any laugh off of that, friends. Um, let's see. Children are much more resilient than we adults are, says Nessa. Yeah. I mean, at least they have a better cap um, ability, I think, to bounce back than most adults. And you've got to worry, like, is all this medication kind of dumbing them down to the point where they're relying on medication for um, for help through um, psychological issues rather than, you know, building a good foundation of relying on their own kind of mental strength. But then it's undeniable that ADHD is a real thing. You know, there are more people suffering from anxiety, from depression. How much of that is society, caused by society through things like social media or added pressure in the workplace? And how much of it is just... Um, you know, how much of are these disorders passed down generationally? How many, how many of them, you know, how many of them actually need uh, medication? Is there a plan to wean kids off medication? This is what worries me is you see kids that are perpetually taking pills rather than kind of working through their problems using a pill. The pills as just um, uh, a temporary thing. Um, uh, Nessa continues here. She says, it's like some people think the protection of our planet is some kind of airy fairy matter. True story. So there you go. From Axios, global warming may be accelerating. I don't think there's much of a maybe about it. At least if we're going to look at this year. And geez, think about what might be coming down the road. Five years time. My God. All right. Next. Final piece of news. Do we even have time? 
Go on, we'll go through this one quickly. 4.3 billion people now own smartphones. 4.3 billion people. The GSM Association 2023 Mobile Internet Connectivity Report. Oof, jeez. The GSM Association 2023 Mobile Internet Connectivity Report. Someone needs to teach these people to name things better, right? <laughs> I need to take a breath at least three times through that. Reveals that smartphone ownership has surged with 55% of the global population now possessing one. 55% of the world's population from zero years old to 100 own a smartphone. Mind-blowing. Um, so yeah, now on a smartphone, a rise driven by decreasing costs and more accessible mobile internet services. However, significant disparity, disparities persist with 3.4 billion still underconnected, primarily due to affordability, infrastructure, digital literacy and safety concerns. The report underscores the necessity for concerted efforts from policymakers, businesses, and civil society to invest in infrastructure, make devices and services more affordable, and bridge digital skill gaps. Okay, this report, by the way, from GizChina, or GizChina.com, fails to mention one thing. Why do they all need a mobile phone? Why do we all need to be so infinitely connected? I often feel I often feel an extreme jealousy for these people <laughs> who who'd opt out of owning smartphones. They all they own a phone, but it's got no apps on it. It's just to make phone calls and maybe to receive and send texts. I feel this little pang of uh, of jealousy over those people because I know I would feel an instant anxiety. I see my mobile phone batteries down to two percent, and you know. And I and I start to feel worried. Is that is that right? Is that the normal way to behave? I know I don't care what you're saying out there. I know you're the same. You know, you see that red bar, and you start you know making phone calls to your family. If I go, if I'm not in touch in the next five minutes, call the police. Bring me a mobile phone battery immediately. <laughs> I get it. I get it. The I just the idea of being unconnected nowadays is terrifying and should it be should we all not be edging a little bit further towards a less connected life because god how good does it feel when you turn your mobile phone off for a few hours you know or you let that mobile phone battery die out of choice that that sinking feeling of relaxation that comes over you when you know that no one's going to get in touch oh god or is it just me my yomo or jomo sorry my joy of missing out <laughs> Um, let's see what people are saying. The plan is to stop looking at your phone and play with your children. Uh, yeah, amen to that. Um, that's from Nessa the Bridge. It means, or I, or I mean by it, overdoing it um, is as bad as overdoing it, or underdoing it is as bad as overdoing it. I think she means. We need to find balance. True story. Nessa says, amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, we, we've got some depressing news today. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to forget the news and we're going to move straight on to today's unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. Jeez, Louise. We're all burning to death. <laughs> Everyone's got ADHD. <laughs> no one can live without their mobile phone. Welcome to planet Earth in 2023, friends. All right, today's unpopular opinion, today's brain fat, today's pedocerebral, pedomental is... Um, Oh, no, that's... Sorry, ignore what you see on the screen, my friends. <laughs> Today's unpopular opinion is that we should all be using, or everyone should only use they, them pronouns. Um, todo el mundo debería utilizar únicamente el pronombre ello. Is how I believe that it should be properly translated. So, if you're a bit out of this issue, let me tell you, where have you been for the last few years... The, the the prevalence of the they, them pronoun to describe um, gender neutral or, um, yeah, I think it's gender neutral people um, and the uproar it caused, um, both in the 
both in in how it was enforced upon people and how um yeah and and the reluctance of certain people to use it so to give you a little bit of um insight you may have noticed on things on certain tools and online media or forms it will now ask you for your pronoun for your pronouns um i for example would classify myself as a he him um my mum mama bo would classify herself as a as a she her but there are gender neutral transgender people who would classify themselves as a they them hopefully you're now up to date on this subject or at least enough to participate in today's unpopular opinion which is everybody should only use they them pronouns as always i thoroughly tortured the elves and they gave me some pros and cons so let's get into those right now everyone's pronouns should be they them using they them eliminates the practice of assuming gender based on appearance or name which can be partially affirming for non-binary or gender non-conforming individuals reducing instances of misgendering next having a universal pronoun could simplify social interactive actions particularly in diverse environments as it eliminates the guesswork or initial learning phase of someone's specific pronouns um, this practice could help in shifting societal focus away from gender boundaries and stereotypes potentially leading to a reduction in gender biases and discrimination and finally in the pro column it could create more inclusive society where individuals who are transitioning questioning or exploring their gender identity feel more comfortable and less singled out in daily interactions all right that's those are the pros basically there to sum up you know them um, uh, having everyone just refer to someone as they them would com- would cut a lot of confusion right you know, if you see someone with a belly, you don't say, here is my pregnant friend, James. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? So you leave out certain descriptors so as not to... You already leave out certain descriptors so as not to avoid to avoid um, insulting people or mislabeling people, right? And I'm just saying, you know, do we really need he, he him, she, her... Can't we just refer to everybody as they there? All right, let's go to the con column saying no, 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 no. Everyone's pronouns should not be they, them. All right. For many, for many, their specific pronouns, he, him, she, her, are an integral part of their identity. A universal approach could feel like an erasure of this aspect of their self-expression. Next, cultural, uh, current, uh, different cultures around the world hold varying views on gender roles and identity. Implementing a universal they-them policy might not respect these cultural nuances or could be seen as imposing a set of beliefs globally. Such a dramatic shift in language might meet with certain resistance, both from individuals who view it as unnecessary complication and those who feel strongly about preserving traditional language structures. While they, them is meant to be inclusive, it may not suit everyone who doesn't fit traditional gender binary or the traditional gender binary. Some might prefer other non-binary pronouns um, and enforcing they, them could be seen as oversimplifying gender identities. Wow. (laughs) It's going to be a big one, guys. Um, I don't think we're going to be, we're going to have time to get into a full debate on this in this half of the show but when we get back we will first of all i just want to take a little time to read what we've got here in the chat okay the bridge here says do i really need to learn new grammar it's the beauty of it bridge no you don't you don't need to learn new grammar you already learned they them all i'm saying is forget he her uh, and and she him <laughs> why do we need it why do you guys need a table to be feminine why do you need a table to be a girl? You yeah, know, why do you need a pen, a map, uh, a water, even abstract concepts? Why do they need to be gendered at all? Why can't we make language more um, more accessible, easier? Anyway, let's continue. Vero says, false. If you only use they, them, you would only be able to express yourself um A third of your possibilities. Languages are really rich, some more than others. Let's use them well. 
fair point from Vero. Um, Rob, I do not want a compl to complicate my life. It's difficult enough as it is. Thank you. <laughs> Nessa says again, so unpopular, but I find it quite stupid. More labels. Can't we just respect everyone and everyone no matter what and stop wasting time on matters that only feel aesthetic? We're going to get into this in a little bit and the, and the pronoun issue after the break. But it is going to be a fascinating talk. Guys, thank you so much for participating in this, the best part of my day every single day. That's talking to you guys. Thank you for being here. Guys, so many things you could have been doing this afternoon, but instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. I will see you after this commercial break. Hey, guys. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind-the-scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian, and you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. The Bravo Show! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this, the one and only Probo Show, coming to you later in the afternoon, if you're lucky enough to be joining us live, it is 6.30pm Central European Time, and this is the Probo Show After Dark. How are we doing? Welcome to Tubbs, joining us all the way from Canada, all the great people joining us in the chat, that's The Bridge, Nessa, Tubbs, Vero, wow, I mean, you're all so great, there's so many people, Naceret, Zul. Um, wow, I, I could read the list, but I'll be here quite a while. But thank you, thank you for being here outside of our normal normal streaming schedule for this special episode. Um, today's unpopular opinion um, seems to be quite... You guys have been quite decisive on this one. We'll get to that in a second. If you've just tuned in, you missed us talking about um, a recent massive review that include 50, included 57 studies and inv involved around 21 million participants that found that ADHD is more prevalent in adults than we ever realized before. And then we uh, went on to uh, look at some data provided to us by Axios.com um, that showed us that global warming is accelerating. Really worrying stuff. And finally, um, some more news that 4.3 billion people, or 55% of the global population, now own smartphones. Oh, Smartphones, dumb people, no? <laughs> Do you not get that feeling? The more technologically advanced we get, the the dumber we become as a society. And then we went on to today's unpopular opinion, which was everyone should use or should only use they, them pronouns. And people are laughing in the chat. If you're listening to the podcast, you have no idea what happened. <laughs> Something happened. <laughs> You have to join us live, twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. Um, all right, so let's get into this. I asked people on Instagram, right, before we got into the show today, I asked people on Instagram, or I made the statement that everyone should only use they, them pronouns. And Instagram said, 73% false. Mm. I'll get into the results from our real decision makers, that's our live audience here tonight, in a second. But first, we're going to pick this apart a little bit. Um, I did get some messages online, as I usually do. Um, not that many, because there was not so much time in between the two shows. But Andrea says, and I this is not our my Andrea, this is a different Andrea. She says, while I respect everyone's right to choose their pronouns, enforcing they, them seems unpractical it erases certain aspects of individual identity that people may want to express all right how should we if we, <laughs> this is the inconsistency right the real inconsistency with the gender issue for me and often when we talk about race and um, sexual orientation the same if we are moving towards a more inclusive society should we not be trying to break down issues? Should we not be trying to homogenize how we describe humans? All right. Let me um, let me talk about this purely in, in terms of race for a second. All right. Even more of a contentious issue. Um, when we when we highlight 
race. Um, I think this is really the the the, the political rights issue with um, what they call um, critical race theory. How are you doing, men? How are you doing? How are you doing, con man? Um, when we highlight ra- when we pigeonhole people, or, okay, you are you are the the black community, you are the Asian community, you are the white community. Like what you're doing there is you're basically saying that a big part of your identity is being white. When we do that about gender, we say a big part of your identity is being a man, a woman, or, or you know, or gender fluid. When we when we do it about um, our sexual orientation, a big part of your identity is being straight, gay, or lesbian. You know, should we not be breaking down those barriers and making a lot more, not kind of classifying each other in terms of what is, in fact, quite irrelevant to who we are as people? If you describe me as a him, what does it that say about me as an individual, other than the fact that I have male genitalia? Are you saying that I'm kind? Are you saying that I'm aggressive? Are you saying that I'm, you're not assertive? Are you saying that I'm funny? Are you saying that I'm, you know, what are you actually saying? Do we really need he, him? Do we really need it? Do we really need she, her? It's... It's a fascinating subject and quite a hotly contested one because our brethren in the political field would tell us that this is oh, paramount importance, protect the language, protect the sovereignty of the English language. Come on. Come on. Do we need to? What are you actually saying about an individual other than an aspect of their gender when you use he, him, she, her? Does it really speak to them? Could you not say they're a fantastic person? Does it have to be he's a fantastic person? She's a fantastic person? Interesting, right? When you think about it in those terms. When we get into the political debate regarding um, uh, regarding kind of gender, or at least the pronoun debate, like some people argue that using they, them pronouns for a singular individual is grammatically incorrect. They should be used for plural subjects. Okay, it's grammatically incorrect. But have you ever been to a real English city? <laughs> you know, most of you um, in the of my international listeners probably speak more grammatically correct English than most English people. In fact, we have a listener right now, Min, joining us in the chat from the Netherlands. It has been shown in studies that kids in the Netherlands speak more grammatically correct English than kids in the UK. So now you're going to argue that grammatical correctness is the most paramount important thing in our society? I think not, boys and girls. Confusion. No, when you use they, them, it becomes confusing. I get confused. What do you get confused about? Eh? Because you can describe someone as a man if you really want to. You don't need to uh, give it any pretext with, he is a man. No, they are a man, right? They are a woman. They are non-binary. They are gender fluid. Do you really need he, him, she, her? When there are there are a swath of society now that have decided that this is the way they want to, this is how they want to identify themselves. A lot of people take issue with the fact, for example, I'm going to continue. Hey man, whatever. I'm going to continue. I'm going to say, yeah, this is this is going to get this is going to get quite contentious, and quite a lot of you are going to disagree with me here. But again, your tears are delicious. <laughs> Your anger only makes me more powerful. Uh, dude is a great alternative, says Con. That gets the Probo stamp of approval. That dude. <laughs> and as we all know, dude does not specify gender. A lot of people will say it's for men. No, it's not. I call my best friend dude all the time. And guess what? They are a woman. Was that difficult? No, it was not. That gets the Probo <laughs> stamp of approval. Okay, so a lot of people say, you know what I don't like about this pronoun issue? You know what? It's not telling me how to refer to the person to which I'm communicating. It's telling, they are telling me how I should communicate about them to other people. They don't like that, right? Because everyone, when I'm talking to you, you're you. Are you okay? How are you doing? Guess what? No gender there, right? When I say you, I could be talking to a man, woman, dog. (laughs) <laughs> house plant so when it comes to our pronouns when we're talking to other people why should it matter 
No, it matters because a certain amount of politicians and pundits want it to matter. And it, let me tell you something, friends. It doesn't. We could eliminate he, him, she, her, and it wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference to how we communicate. Not the slightest bit. So what does this unpopular opinion really unveil? I think it unveils a great amount of political um, propagandizing that keeps us all, all our attention in focused away from maybe the issues that really matter. We could all be they, them, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't. If you want to refer to me as they, them, you go ahead. I don't care. And you know what? None of us should. Because when I'm talking to you as an individual, there is no gender to that word. Woo! Rob's on fire, friends. Rob's on fire. All right, let's continue. Um, you know, some people worry that um, accepting singular they-them pronouns will lead to an infinite number of gender pronouns, making language overly complex. No. The idea of they-them is an umbrella term referring to someone who is not there we are being gaslit by the government says friday con yeah i agree with that fact i agree with that and there's a lot of truth to it <laughs> i don't see that okay okay let's shall i tell you should we un unveil what you guys actually thought about this issue let's do it okay so i made the statement in the chat that everyone should use only use their them pronouns you guys said 83% false. Oh. <laughs> Rob lost. Uh, we'll dig into it a little bit more soon, but I want to read some of your messages in the chat because there's some really good ones. Um, all right. <laughs> Come back to the stream. Let's talk about race, says me. Yeah, no. I was just using it to, to illustrate a point. Um, the bridge says, so Rob... You're saying that making us all ungendered is making life in easier, really? No, I'm not robbing you of your gender. I'm just saying it's unnecessary to specify gender in that part of the sentence. It's unnecessary. Just like in Spanish, it's unnecessary to add for random objects. Mechero. Why does a lighter have to be mascu masculine? Why does a table have to be feminine? Look, I'm not just picking on the English language here. <laughs> let's continue okay let's take away the word fat thin bald hairy millions of others those are adjectives those are adjectives i'm not saying everyone should use the adjective handsome i'm not saying when you talk to other people about me my adjectives are handsome and intelligent <laughs> you use whatever the hell you want to use to describe me i don't care there's a massive difference between pronouns and adjectives um, min says um, honestly, do we know why languages were gendered to begin with? I understand different words for male, female, but why does a library have to be female? I know not fully on topic, but still, what the hell? Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, dude is a great alternative, Con, I agree with that. I don't see the justification, Rob, says Nuriatam. Um, guys is already gender, gender neutral. Yeah, but when you're talking, referring to someone in conversation, you know, you don't say it guys you can't refer to guys yeah i get you let's see min uh sorry nessa when they say a person at all what a fantastic person they say how fantastic say how fantastic that it will be not a person i'm a being hope not convincing nope not convincing <laughs> yeah i see i've fully lost today's debate anyway rob we don't need they them there is it true true but they that oh it is for objects, isn't it? When you say they, them, you mean a sentient being, right? And I think that's the difference. Yeah, let's continue. I'm actually having fun with this. That is the point of this, Min. Um, uh, Bridge, you guys are getting hot under the collar and all angry right now. Chill, man. Chill. The, show, the purpose of the show is not to change your opinion. It's to give you a little different insight into opinions you might already have. Sometimes challenge them, sometimes reaffirm them, but to think a little bit differently. Um, I'll get to my honest thoughts on this in a second. Oh my God, you guys on chat are on fire. Let's see. Um, this is like the unpopular opinion where people are too sensitive. You have to measure every word you say from me. You can call me whatever you want. Me too. 
Let's see, Min says, it matters because it blew up and became part of a culture war. There were conservatives weren't feeling, weren't willing to admit we already use they, them in gender neutral ways. And the progressives on Twitter pretended like everybody should have their own personal pronoun as if that was feasible to begin with. Yeah, Min, true story. That gets the Provo stamp of approval. Yeah. And what Min is saying there, I think, I don't want to kind of put words in your mouth, mouth Min, but so you can correct me if I'm wrong, is this culture war. This kind of political um, grandstanding on issues that have got nothing to do with politics. I use he, they, them, he, she, um, uh, he, he, him, she, her. You know, what has that got to do with politics? What's it got to do with politics? Why should it be an issue spoken about in Congress or in, in political circles? Hmm, it's interesting. How are you doing, Gandalf? Welcome, welcome. I like the idea, Rob, says uh, says Min. I would have agreed if I were here earlier, says uh, Matt Conman. Um, I just call everyone dumbass or smartass, depending on their IQ scores. <laughs> that gets the Probo stamp of approval. Not coming from Gandalf. Technically, it's also for animals. We just always say he or she because we empathize. True story. I like this stream. Rob, let's reduce confusion by using they, them, and the rest of the chat. So why would I use the word ice cream again? So why why would I ever use the word ice cream again? <laughs> I love to be an onlooker, says um, the bridge. So here we go. Let's get to my final thoughts. We'll wrap this up, right? Okay. So is it really conf- is it really confusing to um, uh, to kind of change the language, remove he he him she her? Probably would be, probably would be for like a generation. But what we can't deny, any of us who at least have observed, like myself, probably like me and a bunch of you in the chat or listening to this, who have observed this culture war and thought to yourself, what is all the fuss about? Because we could simplify it right now, friends, by all of us just using he, him, instead of he, him, she, her, using they, them. You know, you, when I'm talking to an individual, we use the word you, there's no gender attached to that. So why should there be a gender when referring to someone in the third person? Right? A lot of people take offense that you shouldn't tell me, you can't tell me how I'm going to talk to about you to another person. And yeah, fair play to you. I mean, is this an issue of um, uh, of simplifying the language? Is this a, a real political hot topic for you? Here's what I would say. If you've been convinced by all this culture war BS that this is something um, that defines you as a person, that you define yourself as a he, him, and that, that, that people who, who say they, them are just misgendering themselves then I would say you have probably prescribed to something poisonous in your life because it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I mean, most of the people I think who listen to this show, if someone said my pronouns are they, them, would be quite respectful about it. They would say, okay, fine. That's no problem for me whatsoever. For those of you who joined my stream before this was um, uh, this was an official show, you know we um, uh, we we had a big member of the community who hasn't been around for a while who was transgender, and I used to put my foot in it every, e- nearly every time I was referring to them. And thanks to her patience, or their patience, I should say, um, you know, I I learned to be a little bit more flexible in the way I speak. It's not a big deal. Don't listen to any right or left wing person who's telling you that it is because it's a lie. And what they're doing is taking your focus away from issues that really matter. What issues really matter? Well, if we're not talking about, for me, if we're not talking about artificial intelligence, climate change, (laughs) you know, then we're probably not talking about anything that has any great importance um, towards the future. And, that's the, and, the, and you know what, guys? That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. And as Grandpa Bo said, opinions, they're like buttholes. Everyone has one, and they all stink, including mine, friends. Let's move on to today's 100 Humans. <laughs> oh, that was a hot one out there, friends. That was a hot one out there. Um, yeah, you guys win. 
Okay, false. Back to the oven with that one. <laughs> I usually use they, them, but do it to be disrespectful and not acknowledge them as a person. <laughs> In that case, you would use it. <laughs> Rob lost. I know I lost Bridge. God damn it. Not convinced, says Nessa. You know, I can't win them all. Also, in real life, um, uh, pronouns such a, uh, are such a non-issue. I know people who transition, people who change names, etc. None of them want their own unique pronouns. Yeah, true story. True story. You know, it's like the left pushed the issue and made it kind of like this touchstone. And the right just got outraged about it and made it a touchstone. And you have to be at one side of an aisle. Most of us, in reality, are somewhere in between. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. All right, friends, it was a long walk to work today across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered a hundred humans and I asked them all a question. Today's question was, name the worst place to take a first date. Name the worst place to take a first date. Nombra el peor lugar para una primera cita. I asked them that question, my friends. They gave me their answers. I am in possession of the top seven answers right here. Your job in the chat is to identify those top seven answers. All right. Um, Min says, a funeral or a graveyard? A funeral or a graveyard? <laughs> um, Nessa says, I would love that. Take me to a funeral. <laughs> You'd love that now it's just a random idea, but if you if you swiped on Tinder and they said, oh, come on, I'm going to take you at a grandma's funeral, you'd be a little disappointed, I think. <laughs> so is a funeral there? Ooh, is a funeral there? Yes, it is. Well done. <laughs> Killing it, man. Well done. It's there. It's the sixth most popular answer with nine of 100 humans saying a funeral. Nuriatam, out of nowhere, says a library. Is a library there? No, it's not. Good answer, though, Nuriatam. A good answer. Um, you guys are just checking off all my f number one first date locations. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, ouch, man. <laughs> Come on. Um, Gandalf says a wedding. A wedding. Talk about pressure. Even worse if it were yours. <laughs> just fill in the name. You just stand at that altar. I'll be up in a second. <laughs> All right. Is wedding there? I'm kind of torn whether I give you this one. You know what? You know what? I'm going to give it to you. A wedding. That was from Gandalf. Wedding's not there, but a family event is there. <laughs> like a family. Do you want to come to grandma's birthday? <laughs> family event is there. Third most popular answer with 14 of 100 humans saying a family event. There is also parents' house from Decoy, so we'll put those two together. And we'll say a family event. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, man, we're going to run out of time for this episode. I'll tell you what. I'm going to pause the clock, and we're just going to keep on going. Um, a church, says Nuriatam. Wah, a church. You know what? It's a good answer, but it's not there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you a, a couple of clues for the top two answers. The top two answers are actually legit kind of date locations. And the f number one answer is actually was my go-to first date location before I was in a relationship. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of this is very objective. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> All right, let's see. A church, Nuria Tam. All right, the sewers, says Min. Sewers not there. Come on. <laughs> Tub says, funeral. Rob says, you're killing it. His puns are on point. That gets the Probo stamp of approval. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, it is the After Dark episode. Min said the Gaza Strip. Jeez Louise. We can't laugh about that. We're not allowed to laugh about that. We get a wah, wah, wah. All right. 
Um, gynecologist or prox- <laughs> proctologist says Nessa. It's a great answer, but not there. Okay, parents' house. Oh my god, nightmare from Vero. Parents' house. Not there either. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's skip down the chat a little bit. Min says, the cinema. Worst place to take a first date, the cinema. Is it there? No, it's not. Actually, my bad. Yes, it is. (laughs) God, sorry, guys. Sorry. Press the wrong button. I need an atch. Um, Cinema is there. And guess what, Min? It's the number one answer. The movies. 26 of 100 humans said the movies. Dude, what's wrong with going to the movies? That's like my number one first date. Number one, if you, you know, if the, you've been catfished a little bit, you know, the movie's over. See you later. <laughs> and if, you know, things are good, you've got a topic of conversation when you go for a drink after. Hello. Come on. It's a great first date location. All right. Min also says my basement. Come on, Min. <laughs> Vero says uh, oh Nuriatama also said cinema well done well done um, Vero says a zoo thought in Spanish a zoo is it a zoo there it's not there okay Decoy out of nowhere says Burger King hmm is a fast food restaurant there worst place to take a first date fast food restaurant yes it is well done the koi out of nowhere there. Nice. Um, Bridge also said cinema. Well done. <laughs> I'd be pretty upset if they took me to Birmingham, says, <laughs> says Min. True story. <laughs> it's not there, though. Um, uh, hospital, says Nessa. Is hospital there? And it's not. Okay, another one of these is something I may or may not have mentioned. Where would I go after the cinema? This is a conventional place where you'd maybe meet someone rather than um, take them on a first date. Woo! Somewhere where you could imbibe. Oh, my God. Getting some answers in the chat. Oh, you guys are on point. Okay, let's see. Nuriatam says a bar. A bar. Is a bar there? Yes, it is. Well done. Nuriatam on fire. All right, bar is there. 21 of 100 humans say a bar, and it's the second most popular answer. And then Min, Nessa, and Vero all said a nightclub. A nightclub, my friends, is there too. Well done. (laughs) You've just got one more to get. I'm going to give you a few clues. I'm going to give you a few clues, but if you don't get it, I'm going to give you the answer. Eight of 100 humans said this one. And it's not a place as so much as meeting a person. Probably the most inappropriate person you could you could go and see on a first date. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in fact not only is it the most inappropriate person you could see on a first date, it's probably the most inappropriate person to talk about on a first date. Nessa has an answer. Nessa has an answer. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nessa says an X to go and see your X. Is it there? Yes, it is. Well done. All right. I like not being on the clock, guys. This is too much fun. All right, here we go. So I asked 100 humans to name the worst place to take a first date. In position number Seven. we had to see your X. All right, to see your ex. Um, eight of 100 humans said that one. In position number six, we had a funeral. <laughs> Just imagine that. Where are we going? You look so smart with your tie and your... Yeah, don't don't worry about it. We just It won't take long. Then afterwards, we're all going for a, to a bar. <laughs> In position number five, we had a nightclub. A nightclub with nine of 100 humans saying nightclub. In position number four, we had a fast food restaurant. In position number three, we had a family event. Okay, in position number two, with 21 of 100 humans, it was bar. 
Well done. It was bar. Gandalf also said strip club. <laughs> that would be quite inappropriate. All right. And then finally, in position, number... Seven. No. One. That's the one. <laughs> the hundred humans are drunk. This is the after night. After dark episode, after all. All right. In position, number one, with the bridge, Nuriatam, and first of all, Min... All saying cinema, yes, the movies was our number one answer. Well done. All right, let's go on to complete the news. Complete the news. If this show were on the radio right now, they'd be dragging me out. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's complete the news time. I'm going to give you a news headline, and you, with the three options I give you, are going to complete the news. If you're one of the people listening to the show right now or watching it live, and you haven't participated, perhaps you feel too nervous to share your opinion. Okay, all you have to write here is A, B, or C. So it's super easy. Okay, here we go. Two Virginia corrections officers admit to blank while an inmate escaped custody. Two Virginia corrections officers admit to blank while an inmate escaped custody. I think this is, correct me if I'm wrong with the translation here. Dos funcionarios de prisiones de Virginia admiten blank mientras un preso escapaba de la cárcel. Okay, you can, you know, you can just give me a, you just can say nivelazo in the chat if I don't know. <laughs> nivelazo, Vanessa, Vanessa. Será posible, vaya nivelazo. All right, here we go. Is it A? Watching TV. A. Watching TV. Is it B. Filming a TikTok video? Or is it C. Falling asleep? Every time you do one of these, Rob, you say something to do with TikTok and it's never TikTok. Is today the day where it's TikTok? Is today the day where it's TikTok? Woo! Two Virginia corrections officers admit to blank while an inmate escaped custody. A, watching TV. B, filming a TikTok video. Or C, falling asleep. I'll salute Min for being the only person in the chat to say A, watching TV. I will salute The Bridge for being the only person in the chat to say C, falling asleep. Everybody else says B, filming a TikTok video. All right, here we go. Strap yourselves in, folks. Here it comes. Two Virginia corrections officers admit to... The answer is... C, falling asleep. <laughs> Congratulations to the bridge, the new oracle. All right, this is true. This comes from Fox News. In August, an inmate, Nassim Isaiah... Rulak escaped from a Virginia hospital during a medical visit after two Virginia Departments of Corrections officers responsible for guarding him fell asleep. The mishap occurred when Rulak's secure metal cuffs were replaced with nylon ones for an MRI and were not reinstated afterwards. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> oh, says the coy. All right, friends. Well, look, that's been um, a hell of a time. I thoroughly got beaten in today's unpopular opinion. Let's Don't tell Natch. Whatever you do. <laughs> Guys, it, I've had a hell of a time. There'll be another late night edition coming on Wednesday night. So set your date, set your calendars for that one. Friends, so many things you could have been doing today. Instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me and it means the world. I will see you on the next episode.